Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today I'm going to be talking about TechSound, which is a viscoelastic polymer, so something similar to mass loaded vinyl um, or something like green glue doing a similar thing in soundproofing. Um, it's mostly found in the UK and throughout Europe. So for all of my American listeners or those of you in New Zealand and in Australia and other parts of the world, uh, it might be harder to find this product. But for those of you in Europe, I have had potential clients and people reach out to me asking about tech sound. And so I wanted to do a video on it just to give you guys an understanding of what it is, how much it costs, and whether I think it's worth using in your soundproof home recording studio design. That said, if you are not in Europe or in a place that provides tech sound, you still might find this uh, lesson helpful in the sense that a lot of these products, like I said, green glue or mass loaded vinyl, you can find throughout the world. And I kind of go over what I think about them and how they should fit into your soundproofing uh, budget and also your soundproofing design and plan. All right, before we jump in, I do have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It's 45 minutes of in-depth training teaching you exactly how to build and design your soundproof home recording studio. So if you're on that journey, if you're building a soundproof home recording studio or even a soundproof room, this will be a helpful resource for you. To watch it right away, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into this lesson on should you use tech sound to soundproof a room. So before I jump into what tech sound is, I wanna just do a quick review of what damping is, which is what these products are meant to do. They dampen sound. So damping in a very simplified manner is a product that reduces the vibration of sound through its design by converting those sound waves into heat. So it's a specific material. A lot of these, we call them viscoelastic polymers. Um, things like rubber are used in soundproofing, mass loaded vinyl, tech sound is one of them. And green glue is actually slightly different, but it still is a damping agent, something that helps turn sound vibrations into heat, thus making it so they don't transfer into your room or outside of your room. So it's a piece of the puzzle when you're trying to build a soundproof room and it's a tool, one tool of many. Um, so now that we know what damping is, let's talk about what tech sound is. So according to their data sheet, their technical data sheet, tech sound is a high density polymer based synthetic soundproofing compound or membrane. And like I said before, that sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but we know that it's similar to mass loaded vinyl and green glue, so other similar products on the market. It's something that you would put in between or before your layers of drywall or plasterboard or whatever you're doing in your soundproof wall or ceiling or floor design. And it's meant to add to the soundproofing by, again, reducing sound vibrations that come through the wall. Also, this material at the Tech Sound 100 weighs almost the same amount as 5 8 inch type X drywall or in other parts of the world, 16 millimeter drywall, jib board, plasterboard, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it is roughly the same mass. So when we're talking about soundproofing, we have this quality of damping, but there's also just the pure quality of mass in stopping sound. And, and mass is a very important aspect of soundproofing, more so than damping in my personal professional opinion. So again, according to Tech Sound's data sheet, it's used to soundproof floors as like an underlayment to help with impact noise. Uh, they use it to soundproof ceilings and roofs in specific designs where you wanna add an extra layer of mass and damping on underneath your roof or on top of your roof. It's used for damping metal decks because metal decks can have more of like a vibration from the, the vibration of sound in the metal. So putting this tech sound over it will help with that. They also say it's used in building sound booths, um, insulating and soundproofing machine rooms, gutter pipes, and the damping of metal sheets. So there's a lot of aspects where tech sound can be really helpful with your soundproofing design, especially in more industrial settings. Now let's look at how much does tech sound cost? So I did some quick research on the internet and again, it looks like UK um, soundproofing stores are the suppliers of tech sound. And one that I found that had the price listed on their website, I did a little bit of math and it came out to 14.87 euros. So 
that's per square meter. So now you can use that as a rough idea, you know, round it up to 15 euros per square meter if you like, and you can start comparing and contrasting different materials that compare to TechSound. Now it's important to know that the cost I just said there was for TechSound 100, which if I were to use this material for soundproofing of any kind, that's what I would want to use. The reason being that that's how you're getting the mass that's equivalent to say five eighths inch drywall. It's like roughly up there at 10 kilograms per square meter, which we'll talk about in a second here. Um, there's other versions of TechSound, TechSound 70, which I think goes down to seven kilograms per square meter. I think it's labeled off of the mass of it. Uh, there's a 30 and a 50 or 35 and a 50. All those might be cheaper, but again, you're getting less mass, so they're not gonna work as well as the high level TechSound 100. So that's what I would use if I was building a studio and wanted to use this product. Now, for what you're probably interested in, uh, in my opinion, do I think this TechSound sound product is worth it. And uh, some of you who have watched my videos before, you know, I'm not a big fan of mass loaded vinyl. I have used green glue on my own studio and I think it helped, but do I think it's worth the money? Actually now, if I were building a studio again, I don't think I'd use it. So I've shifted my philosophy on this a lot and I'm gonna explain why I think tech sound falls into that category of a material that certainly works. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but is it worth your money and the added cost and Neat and you know added stress of having to source it from UK when you can just buy typical construction materials in your hometown. So this is why I think using specialty soundproofing materials, we use them when we need them, but not necessarily say, oh, we have to use something like tech sound. All right, so let's jump into why. So for typical applications like a home studio design, uh, I wouldn't recommend tech sound. Now, some people might be like, oh, for cars or boats or machine rooms, yes, there might be times when you wanna use this product. But for those of us building home studios, I think it's not necessary. And the biggest reason is the cost. So with a double wall system, if you have two layers of 5 8 inch drywall, 16 millimeter drywall for those of us in metric, uh, have a, a stud wall, a one inch or 26 millimeter air gap, another stud wall, and then two more layers of 5 8 inch drywall on the outs on the other wall. Um, that gives you an SDC of 63. And SDC ratings are mainly used in the US, but they are a good way to compare and contrast different soundproof systems. And we know that this wall system works great for home recording studios. And for most applications is plenty soundproof enough to do what you wanna do in a home recording studio. So that said, why would we take out one of those layers of drywall and replace tech sound or add tech sound to this system? So I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So let's look at the cost difference right here. So say you have this double wall system, you got two layers of drywall on the outside wall, two layers of drywall on the inside wall, and let's say you're like, I don't wanna use two layers of drywall, I'm gonna replace one of those layers with tech sound and you know, say, okay, this will be a better soundproof wall because it's this special damping system as well. This is a common argument with mass loaded vinyl as well. Um, so the cost of switching out the drywall to the tech sound, um, we have to look at the cost per square meter of our drywall. So in the United States, 5 8 inch drywall um, costs roughly 5.7 euros. Now I did some math and changed it all from square feet and dollars to euros and square meters. So that's 5.7 euros per square meter. So when we compare that back to tech sound, which is roughly 14.7 or, or 15 euros, um, we can see that it's a 38% cost difference, meaning you're gonna spend 38 to 40% more if we keep rounding up uh, in cost if you go with tech sound for what I would consider to be the same exact amount of mass. Um, and actually the drywall weighs 10.7 kilograms per square meter, whereas tech sound 100 weighs 10 kilograms per square meter. So you're actually getting slightly more mass for way less money. And that's kind of my argument here. Plus it's easier to source. Plus you don't have to pay for shipping and tax uh, and all that stuff on the back end, raising the price of the tech sound. Now, the argument for the fact that it dampens, sure, that could be a positive thing, but with these da data submittal sheets, it's really hard to know how much more soundproofing you're getting from these. They do have a transmission loss uh, comparison if you didn't use it versus did use it, but we don't really know. It's not comparing apples to apples when we take drywall out. Really what I compare is mass in a lot of these situations and the mass is better on the drywall. So on the other end, if you were to look at it as, oh, well, I'm gonna add the tech sound on top, 
the same thing applies. It's actually cheaper to just add another layer of drywall to your soundproof wall. So you could have three layers of 5 8 inch or 16 millimeter drywall on either side of your walls. It's gonna be cheaper and potentially faster to install and you're probably gonna get better soundproofing because you've got more mass. So that's my argument for and against these things like mass loaded vinyl, tech sound and green glue is it's cheaper usually to just add more drywall than to pay for these fancy products. Now, I wanna be fair, there might be some situations when you might wanna use tech sound. So if you're trying to save some space in your room, let's say you have a very small space to begin with, tech sound is about five millimeters thick, whereas drywall can be 16 millimeters thick. So you're gonna save you know, some space, not a ton, by using tech sound over traditional drywall. Another reason tech sound could be preferable is it can act as a vapor barrier. So if you used it uh, underneath your roof, on top of your roof, um, you could use it on the inside of an exterior facing wall to help with moisture problems. So there are reasons why tech sound might be something you wanna look into. And lastly, I think there's applications in soundproofing where things like tech sound and mass loaded vinyl might be useful. For example, soundproofing cars where you can't use drywall and traditional soundproofing methods, soundproofing machinery, uh, metal systems like they talked about that are kind of beyond my scope of designing home recording studios. There might be applications where using tech sound could be a benefit over other soundproofing methods. So in conclusion, on a very basic level, I'm always proposing now that people look at using just regular construction materials and building soundproof systems, which means having a decoupled wall ceiling or potentially just a concrete floor. Uh, but if you don't have concrete, a decoupled floor and making sure you have as much mass as possible on those assemblies. So that means adding as much drywall, as much plasterboard, as much brick, as much concrete, Anything that has mass, we can use as a building material and we decouple it. And then lastly, we make sure it's airtight. So we make sure we use acoustic sealant all the way around our systems. We use things like putty pads to cover the backs of outlets and light fixtures. And in our designs, you know, we're always thinking about those three things, which comes back to the basics of soundproofing. When we start adding in things like uh, damping systems, uh, they can help us, but a lot of times I find the cost doesn't really outweigh the benefit. And in my opinion too, with the studio design, the more I've done this, I like to keep things really simple. So when we order like a ton of mass loaded vinyl or a bunch of tech sound and it takes five or six weeks to ship and then our project's behind schedule because we had to order that, there's a lot of things that you gotta think about beyond just the technicalities of products that will hold up your design and your build from getting finished on time. So for all that, that's the reason I don't recommend using tech sound. However, you're welcome to do your own research. Uh, this is just my take on it and how I would design studios. So I hope that was helpful. Again, if you are on this journey of trying to design and build your own home recording studio or a soundproof room in your house, uh, check out my free soundproofing workshop. I try to distill down the entire design process into a 45 minute video and you'll get a lot out of it. It's completely free. So that's at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. And I'll see you all next week with some more information about soundproofing and room acoustics. Mm -hmm.